This is Finish Line. Hello everyone, my name is Spencer Walsh. Welcome to this edition of the Finish Line Podcast. Today on the show, we have so much for you to get into today. Uh, We have latest in college football and more on that, including the fiasco with Florida State, the latest on the Alabama Ole Miss game, and a lot more with thoughts on that. Today, also the Carlos Carrasco injury, that's making big stories, the big uh, AL East and just general MLB playoff races, Um, also there is tons of other stuff going on, including the whole, whole Penn State fiasco, that's going to be our guest of the, this week's show, uh, yes, you are listening to the Finish Line Podcast, my name is Spencer Walsh, uh, of course we got FSU, uh, Davis and Chris Davis become the first AL player with consecutive 200 strikeout seasons. And if we see anything along the way, we will let you know. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Once again, my name is Spencer Walsh, and there's a lot of stuff to get to. Alright, so we lead off today with this whole thing, which is pretty horrible. And, ugh, it's... It's really bad, and it's just so. I don't. I don't think it's even very representative of Penn State, even uh, what they're doing this weekend. And it's the only reason why they're making any headlines. Frankly, the football team is not good, and they they are here right now. And we're gonna have a guest on to talk, to talk about this. Um, he's a Penn State alum now. Is pretty successful, I'd say, in business. Uh, he'll be joining us, uh, Stu Ralston, a little bit later in the show. Penn State Navy Lions honored the legacy, not very good one, of former head coach Joe Paterno in a video during the first half of Saturday's game against Temple. DK Pittsburgh Sports' Andre Snyder captured the footage of the tribute that played on the video board at Beaver Stadium. So this is um, Andre Snyder's clip. And we will just play this for you in a brief moment here. Yeah, so it pretty much goes on to show uh, clips of the great Joe Paterno. As and just the great things he did, and then this is what the fans did. They stood up and gave him and gave him a standing ovation. Also, according to David Warden of the L.A. Times, passed along for a statement from A.D. Sandy Barbour, who said Penn State planned to tribute planned a tribute that focused on the commitment Paterno had to student athletes and academics, as well as being sure that. Uh, 25 plus, maybe even more, children would be molested by his assistant coach over the years. That's probably the thing he had the most commitment of. I mean, I think I'd, that'd be fair to say. 40 years, that is a pretty dedicated commitment. A commitment to be that blindsided to something so bad. How bad can your mora- morals be? How bad can your morales be that you have that kind of just turn the other cheek, look the other way to see and just say, mm, I don't care. I'm just gonna, I have that commitment to making sure that children continue to get molested at Penn State. I'm so proud. Um, yeah, so he focused on, on the commitment Paterno had to student athletics as well as the highlights of that 1966 game. Paterno made a head coaching debut for the Nittany Lions in 1966 with Saturday serving the 50th, 50th anniversary of his first stint on the sideline at State College. That was before uh, 
long time assistant coach and longer time child molester uh, Jerry Sandusky was hired on to the squad but there was still a good portion of his career where he turned the other cheek to numerous numerous people saying you know what there's someone raping kids in your locker room. You want to do something about it? I think that may be a little bit of a, yeah, kind of important thing. According to the New York Times, uh, Joe Drape, a graduate assistant with a football team at Lorden, turned out that he witnessed Sandusky sexually abusing a boy in a shower at the school's football facility in 2001. According to Drape, Paterno did not report or atta- uh, the attack to the police. I mean, it just goes on and on, and it's horrible. Shortly after Paterno was fired by the Penn State Board of Trustees, he was revealed he'd been diagnosed with lung cancer. He died of that in 2012. Five months later, Sandusky convicted of sexually abusing 10 boys. He was se- uh, subsequently sentenced to prison for, for 30 to 60 years. Uh, in August, Sandusky returned to court when he initiated an appeal of the sentence. I mean, I just don't understand... Like, how in the world you can possibly do honor someone who knew about this, who was told by many, numerous people, according to reports over the years, that, hey, you know what? Your assistant coach is a child molester. He didn't even want to do anything about it. Like, that to me, like, it's the only reason why they are in the news. Penn State is in the news. And it is shocking how tone deaf, how bad they are at just like doing this whole public relations thing. But anyway, we'll get to that uh, a little bit later on in today's show. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here today on the Finish Line Podcast as we continue to get started. Uh, And we are recording this over the course of two days. So the thing is, the benefit is over the course of the weekend, the two days of the weekend, and the benefit of this whole situation is there is we have college football games we could talk about and Sunday games we could talk about because they are just pouring in. I'm recording it around six this around uh, six o'clock on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, there's that whole equation there as well. And let's see, there uh, there is a lot of stuff going on. None more important, perhaps, than the fact that Lady Gaga will be playing the 2017 Super Bowl halftime show. And, I mean, I think that's just, that's pretty bad. I mean, there are many other, there are so many other people you could use. Like, like, can we really be honest here? Like, Lady Gaga is the best you can come up with. Like, she was popular during, like, 2008. Like, she was in, 2007, she's like, I mean, that doesn't need, that doesn't work. Uh, I mean, I just, no. Um, Lady Gaga, she's going to perform reportedly, but it's very likely, according to USMagazine.com's uh, Nicholas Houtman on uh, Sunday. Shirley Halperin of Billboard first reported on September 13th that Lady Gaga was in talks with the NFL to perform, uh, though the NFL declined to confirm it. It's spoken with the Lady Gaga. I mean, like, she was, like, she was popular, like, 2000, like, her her best song was, like, Poker Face or whatever. Like, that that was their biggest hit, I'd say. Like, somewhere, something like that. But her that's her best stuff. Her best stuff is long gone. Uh, she's, he, uh, let's see, an NFL representative told this journalist, we have had conversations with several fantastic artists about a Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show, and an NFL representative told this journalist, however, at this point, we are not at a final decision. We're happy there is so much excitement for the show, and probably that whole excitement was just killed by the fact that they just announced they're having on Lady Gaga. Because, I mean, she doesn't do anything good. I mean, maybe they'll get some good other people in, maybe like, uh, I mean, there are so many other legit uh, people you could, you could go, like, DJ themed, I don't know, I like, can get, like, Calvin Harrison do a set, I mean, like, you could get, let's see, like, like there are so many other popular, popular, uh, artists you could get in there, and, uh, let's see, 
I mean, I'm looking. You got. I'm going to put in. Like, what, what are popular things going on right now? I mean, there, 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 there's no doubt there are a lot of big hits going on right now. Just going to pull. Like, just go take a song off the top charts. And it's going to be better than Lady Gaga. I mean, I don't even care. Like Elton John or something. Like Mac Miller, Calvin Harris, Shawn Mendes. Uh, I mean, there are so many other things you could do. Um, Like, let's see, top charts. I'm just going to pull this up here. Closer. You could get Halsey. You could get... uh. Justin Bieber, I mean, who does not love, like, Justin Bieber, he's redeemed himself, I mean, th- that's obviously, uh, that's a good Charlie Puth, ex-ambassadors, you could do kind of like last year with, like, Coldplay, and, I mean, there are so many better options uh, you could do than that, so I'm not impressed at all with the NFL's choice to have Lady Gaga at that time. Like, last year was Coldplay, even though Beyonce and uh, Bruno Mars stole the show as everyone thought and knew they would. Uh, and then this year, it's going to be Lady Gaga, who's popular in 2007, but Coldplay. I, I think we all know Coldplay is the music to press people want to, want to listen to uh, when, they fall, when they try and fall asleep. And Lady Gaga is just so five years ago. I mean, she had like one album three years ago or something. I mean, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people want Adele, but she declined the offer. Like that, w- Adele would be fine. Like there are so many other better options you could do for Adele. Uh, let's see. We have Jerry Jones says Randy Gregory's appeal not scheduled yet. I mean, there's not. I can't help you with that, Randy Gregory. Uh, let's see. There are NFL scores rolling in right now. Uh, Cardinals 27, Buccaneers 7 right now. I really do think, I mean, I, I, along with many other people, are pretty high on the Cardinals right now. They are a solid, solid team. I don't think there's any denying that. I mean, they got Bruce Arians. They got solid, uh, solid cast of characters and Carson Palmer, Larry Fitzgerald, solid defensive system. Larry, apparently Larry G- Lynn's defense turned off the Knicks as a possible free agent reunion. According to New York Post, I just had that pop into my uh, inbox system there. That tells me all the stories that are going on. All right, so right now, 13-6. Um, Broncos over the Colts right now on CBS. All these 4 o'clock games are in the third right now. Uh, also, I think this is pretty interesting. The Rams, like, one of the, one of the teams, I don't know, it's just, like, kind of the way it is with the Patriots and the Giants. One of the teams that uh, the Rams do the, do the best against are the Seahawks. So they're up 6-3 to three right now in the Seahawks, and they're playing quite well. The Rams are. But they're, like, there's no doubt their defense is uh, shutting them down. Tyler Lockett's injured, which is going to be... I don't know if you remember last year, he got hit hard against the uh, Cowboys, but I, I don't I don't know if he, he'd be able to get back, or he's questionable trying to get versus the Rams, but we do not know the latest on that. That could be, that could definitely be a big deal. Um, also, the Falcons and the Raiders, that's kind of a... The Falcons are up on the Raiders 13 to 7 right now. I think that's a that's a game really the Raiders should be winning if they want to go uh considered real contenders in the NFC East at this point. Like I mean, that that's something I mean, come on, you got to win that. Um Matt Ryan's been pretty good. One uh 157 yards, one touchdown and let's see Raiders there's Derek Carr. Who hasn't been quite as good? I mean, let's see. There is Washington. I mean, how is Amari Cooper doing? Two receptions, 30 yards. I do think they have to target Amari Cooper more uh, for that. Because, I mean, they're definitely not um, the most important things in the world receivers are. 
Um, but they are very, very helpful in getting a team to.